Hey guys, it's Suck, and I'm um, back for some more Danganronpa V3. And uh, now it's time for the class trial. Everyone! Is everyone ready? <laughs> Not like we have a choice, right? <laughs> You're quick to understand. It's as though Monokuma has you trained. W what? You've got nothing to worry about, right? We'll figure out who the culprit is, won't we? Don't worry. Of course we don't need to worry. The top suspect is super obvious this time. Hey! Right, Himiko? How <laughs> dare you bully Himiko, you degenerate! You want me to Aikido chop your head off, huh? Wait! That's not even Aikido anymore, is it? Either way. This matter will be discussed in due time. You should save your arguments until then. That's right. Yeah, let's put an end to this at the class trial. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Man, I don't think this will ever get old. <laughs> I'm surprised that this is still like the entrance. The door appeared before us with a pomp, as if sending heroes off to war. After a pause, we all start stepped inside. We were silent. All we could hear was our unsteady breathing. Just as we passed through the door. Our first class trial without Kaede. We all start up again. This feels different. Normally I wouldn't mind the shaking. But I'm feeling especially sensitive to it now. Each of us felt the trembling as we sank further. Without sure footing, I'm positive I would have fallen too. My breathing was becoming more ragged and my heart pounded harder and harder. Just when I thought I would pass out. The elevator stopped. This wasn't the end though. What? Oh, just the beginning. Welcome! You've hopelessly arrived again! Isn't it wonderful to come here again? Because it's really wonderful. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? I put so much effort into this building. It should be a monument. Aww. Actually, we're the ones who used the existals to build this courtroom. <laughs> the father just took all the credit. Wonderful. But I am happy to be used as a slave by father. What are you saying? You idiots are really committed to this henchman bit, are ya? <laughs> So cute. You're just so cute, I can't help working you to the bone. <laughs> you put a, a lot of elaborate detail into this courtroom. It's almost like it's for show. Oh. For show, huh? That's an interesting way to put it. Hmm? Is this just for show? Are you showing this to the people outside? <laughs> <laughs> Those people aren't with us, so you don't need to worry about them. Get it? They're not with us, as in no longer with us? You know what I mean? Hey, um... In other words, you 13 people are the only ones left in this world. Now show me how you intend to bargain for your lives. <laughs> and the class trial began. Ryoma, the ultimate chance pro, after falling from his former glory, he told us he had no reason to live. Even so, he said he wanted to fight beside us to help us get out. And for that, he was trying to find a reason to live. He might have been a little stern, but he wasn't a cold man at all. And the person who killed him... ...is here right now. I don't want to believe... I want to believe this is all a lie, but I don't want to believe any of this. But... If this is where I find the truth, I won't avert my eyes anymore. This is the wish she entrusted to me. I will find the truth to get out of here with everyone. Alive. I'm going to survive. I can't die in here, in order to keep my promise to her. I will fight. I will fight for my life in this trial of truth and lies. Ahem. Now then, let's begin with the basic explanation of the class trial. 
During the trial, you'll present your arguments for who the culprit is and vote for who done it. Vote correctly, and only the blackened will be punished. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will graduate from this academy. I'm kind of surprised they didn't change also, up the room. refusing rooms. to vote will result in your death. So you better vote for someone. Now, let's get this crazy, awesome, crazy awesome to the max trial underway! I think we all know who the most suspicious one is. It's... Let's combine our power <laughs> and work together, everyone! Yeah! Um... The person who's most suspicious is... Now let me your energy, everyone, <laughs> so we can catch the culprit! Because the murder happened during the magic show, the culprit can only be... <laughs> I'm in top form today! Stop interrupting! <laughs> Tenko, why are you interrupting me? We can't have a good trial if you talk over me! Huh? I'm not interrupting you! No. Whatever you have to say is probably worthless anyway, because all males want to talk about is S-E! Himiko seems suspicious. Oh, freaking Angie. Angie, I thought you guys were buddies. Angie, how can you accuse Himiko? Aren't you her friend? <laughs> um, I'm just telling you what Atua is telling me. He is using his divine knowledge to show us the way to survive. You should thank him, lest he pour his holy wrath upon you all. I want to see that. Screw Atua! <laughs> that guy's got nothing on me. Protect Himiko! I can. Yeah. It does point to Himiko being the most suspicious. Yeah, but that's the only died during Himiko's magic show. So? His body appearing in the water tank leads one to think the escape trick played a part. It's only natural we suspect Himiko. She was the one performing the trick. No, no, that's wrong. The underwater escape wasn't a trick. It was magic. Magic. <laughs> it's not the part you need to deny. You gotta tell us you're not the culprit. Magic, huh? Magic. That's so cool. <laughs> what a mysterious miracle. Now, did you kill Ryoma, Himiko? Atua will hear your confession. Stop it! There's no way any of that is true. Oh it's true, though. Himiko used the underwater escape trick to kill Ryoma. How? But I still don't have a clue how Himiko did the trick. Th there's no trick. That really was magic. You know, maybe it really was magic. Yeah, Gota's right. Oh, stop it. If you don't reveal your trick now, then we'll vote you as the culprit. Yeah. Stop picking on Himiko! A cute tiny flower like her couldn't kill anyone. Yeah. I get that you want to defend her, but that might be a bit much. Yeah, as I expected, the others suspect Himiko, but I have my doubts. I can't let this case get derailed by misunderstandings. I'm the ultimate detective, so it's up to me. Oh yeah, let's do this. Atua has blessed me with an epiphany. Oh my. <laughs> the culprit used the underwater escape trick. No. To pull off a sneaky switcheroo with Ryoma. After that, the time ran out. The tank above Ryoma opened and piranhas came pouring out. Run! He was in the line! He was bone by piranhas. Savage way to go. No, that's wrong. Hey, she said it. <laughs> the underwater escape was no trick. It's magic. Wait, you heard it the first time, Titless. No one cares. It was magic. Oh, oh. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. This is the magic water tank trick. Wait, I could do this. <laughs> What's wrong with the right. The underwater escape might be real magic. <laughs> Because from what I've seen, there is no trick or gimmick in that tank. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. See, Shuichi agrees. This is actually There's a no trick. 
There's... It's magic. Kimiko, why do you look so surprised? Wait up, Shuichi! Why are you trying to white knight your way into Himiko's heart? Because Himiko's adorable! Just so you know, Himiko has already chosen me as her one and only soulmate! That certainly wasn't my intention. But if that trick was actual magic, then I'm more inclined to believe she's the culprit. If you can perform yeah, mysterious has a point. miracles, couldn't you have just swapped places with Ryoma? What? N no, wait. Ryoma couldn't have been killed by the piranhas. Because the piranhas I used in my show were special. They only eat dead flesh. That explains a bit. Only dead flesh? That is a new fact. What the? Are you just pretending to be nice to Himiko so she'll tell us the truth? Uh, no, that's not it. No, I'm just being honest. It's magic. <laughs> but Himiko's information was not was useful. Ryoma was not killed by piranhas. There's one more piece of evidence that we have that proves that. Huh? Are you sure it wasn't the piranhas? We saw Ryoma reduced to bones. He totally died from all the piranhas chops, right? No, Ryoma's death was not caused by the piranhas. The Monokuma file indicates the cause of death is drowning. Oh, so it wasn't the piranhas then. He was drowned. Ooh, I see. I haven't checked the Monokuma file yet. I haven't checked yet. the Monokuma file yet, so that's <laughs> so. Really? <laughs> you lying little brat! Telling lies is what turns you into a degenerate male! <laughs> so what? Ryoma drowned, Himiko changed places with him, and then the piranhas ate him! Right? No! No, Himiko only had 60 seconds to escape from the tank. Even if they'd changed places at the start of the show, that's insufficient time to drown someone. If that is the case, then when did he drown? Ryoma, when did Ryoma drown? Before the, yeah, it was before. That's it. Yeah, it was clearly beforehand. Ryoma was already drowned before the show started. <laughs> Agreed. Before being eaten by the piranhas, he made no attempt to escape the water. To be precise, he made no movements whatsoever. By that point, he was by already dead. By that point, he had already. Could that mean his body was hidden until the culprit made it appear in the tank? Hidden? Where? The culprit would have had to hide the body near the tank and then show it during the act. Easier said than done. Was there a place on stage where the culprit could have hid the body? Oh, wait. Himiko should know since she performed the underwater escape trick. Himiko, why won't you just explain it to us? It's magic. It's magic. We've been through this. <laughs> you no, know, maybe it really was magic. The uh, detective just said so. <laughs> Come on, Maki. <laughs> Himiko is committed to her act, but those who deal in dreams are oft liars. Why is everyone still picking on Himiko? You're all worse than a drunk dad's ramblings. We should let him vent. After all, it's tough being the man of the house. Man, we gotta figure out how the trick works to find where the body was hidden. Yeah. But Himiko does not wish to tell us how she performed her act. Then let's work together to reveal the secret behind Himiko's trick! No! So, not real magic? No, it's real! <laughs> no, it was real magic. It's real magic! Magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. Yes, magic. Oh, no! It's Himiko's curse! Her curses are really powerful! <laughs> Aren't incantations usually more, um, complicated than that? Yeah, for real. Anyway, we need to determine how Himiko performed the trick. If we can figure that out, this case is going nowhere. How did Himiko escape the water tank? Um... Maybe she just climbed out and no one noticed. Nah, she definitely would have been caught. Perhaps the mechanism was set up on the stage. Oh wait, maybe... The curtain covering the tank was certainly suspicious. What about that square pane of glass we found in the tank? Maybe the tank had a secret hatch. Hmm. It must be real magic! Yes. Yeah! Real escape magic! Maybe there were two Himikos! 
two Himikos. And one of them was Sumugi in disguise. Hey, my costumes aren't disguises. And one of them was Sumugi in disguise. We can't let it end here. Did I really just do that? <laughs> Maybe the tank had a secret hatch. Oh. I agree. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there's... There you go. <laughs> Maki is correct. There was an escape hatch on that tank. Yeah, that... Yeah, I'm I see. Really... So it did have one. That's right. I discovered a similar tank in Himiko's lab. There was a panel on the side that could open. That was her escape. Uh, Mind over strength! Oh, jeez. I was <laughs> just gonna be like, no, it was magic! <laughs> no! Your logic is all wrong, Shuichi! How? Hmm? What do you mean? And you don't even know why you're wrong either, typical degenerate male. Sure. I'll smash in your face with my fists of hot burning steel! Sure. I love this song. <laughs> the sight of the tank being open doesn't have anything to do with Himiko's escape. She didn't use an escape hatch. I know she didn't do that. And now, I'm gonna punch you! What? Oh no. Yes. Wait a second. Before you punch me, what makes you so sure she didn't? Because if she escaped from a hatch in the tank, the water would have gushed out with her. There would have been water everywhere. Gotcha. I'll cut through your words. Because there was water everywhere. There was a reason the room wasn't flooded with water. The staircase that was attached to the water tank. Try to remember how the staircase was positioned. It was aligned perfectly with the tank's escape hatch. Meaning, the water tank was connected to the inside of the staircase. Inside staircase? His body was in stairs? Nah. Knowing that, it's clear how Kimiko made her escape from up... There was a curtain covering the tank during the performance, allowing Himiko to enter the staircase from the hatch undetected. Any water that spilled out would have simply funneled into the staircase. Ah. So how do you get out from the staircase? I guess there's a little door. The staircase also has an escape hatch, one facing away from us. It's placed so that the water would not drain from the staircase. In which case, a person could exit and leave water inside the staircase. Uh... However, that person would be soaked, meaning that some trace should be left. That would explain why there was a puddle around the stairs. So when Himiko came out from the stairs, her wet clothes dripped water all over. That makes sense. Haha, <laughs> bitch! Caught you soaking wet and red-handed! Oh, jeez. Wait, no. No, Himiko! Judging from Himiko's reaction, you hit it right on the bullseye. But Himiko's clothes should have been wet when she left the water tank. Oh, she was perfectly fine. Behold them. Aw. She was so, like, happy about it, too. She's like, I did it. definitely not wet. Of course. That's because my underwater escape wasn't a trick. It was magic. Yeah. No magic had to do. No magic had to do with her wire clothes magic. Ah. She changed her uniform. That's it. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I could think of. You had 60 seconds to change her uniform. That's because you could do that. she changed her uniform. The dormitory is stocked with uniforms. Yeah. I remember seeing Himiko go to the gym this morning, carrying a uniform and a towel. Ah! Ah! Why would you say that? I see. She had a towel, too. 
she may not have had time to fully dry her hair. But her short hair and hat ensured we were none the wiser. Ah. Himiko can't get wet! Because her body repels water! Yeah. Like a duck? Yeah, she's like a duck. Himiko, come on. Give it up already. Fine. You win. Oh. It's just like you said. The water tank and staircase both have mechanisms. Oh. So I was correct. Oh, Maki, come on. But that doesn't mean I use them. What? I didn't need them, because I used my magic. Again with the magic crap. Were you dropped on your head as a kid? Now that we understand how the trick was performed, <laughs> let us move on. Yes, let us proceed. Where did the culprit hide Ryoma's body? From our discussion earlier, his body could have been in the space inside the staircase. But that's where Himiko would escape from, right? So Himiko went in the stairs with the body? What kind of kinky shit is she into? No. That seems unlikely. There isn't enough space for two people to fit in there. Yeah, the stairs are pretty cramped. It'd be hard to fit even Ryoma and Himiko in there. Who says they went in together? She could have made the switch as she was leaving the tank. No, because Gonta didn't see it. At the same time, she could have pulled out the body from inside the stairs. No, that doesn't make any sense. That way, she'd have room to put herself in there. No, Himiko is not I the culprit. that explains how Himiko changed places with Ryoma's body. Alright, I'm not a big fan of Angie at all. Why did you automatically assume it was Himiko? Because Angie's the freaking culprit. Who else but Himiko could have done it? You freaking set up this whole thing. No. Uh, Angie, you spent more time with Himiko than any of us, so why are you accusing her? Exactly. You may think you're protecting Himiko, but what if she really is the culprit? She's not. We'll all die, and it will be all your fault. Atua will lose precious devotees. Are you okay with that, Tenko? I'm totally fine with that. Whoa. I don't care what anyone says. Himiko would never murder someone! That's what I believe more than anything. It's true. I want to believe in her, no matter what. If I can't do that, then I'd rather just die. No. So until this body takes its final breath, I'm gonna keep believing in Himiko. Oh no. Wait, are you in the middle too? The only one who could have switched out Ryoma's body is Himiko herself. No, that's dry. When Himiko was escaping the tank, Gonta, she dragged out the body hidden in the stairs. What did I do? Oh, I hit the and wrong button. switched places with it. Are you telling me you saw that happen? No Go one could have seen that. Uh, Gonta. It would have occurred in the middle of the show. Gonta. When the tank was covered with a curtain. Let's go to. So basically, no one saw anything. Eh, that's wrong. Aha! That's wrong! Someone did see inside the tank. It was Gonta. Yes. Gonta had climbed onto the stage and was looking into the tank from above. Isn't that right, Gonta? Yeah, Gonta saw down into Tank, but saw no one in there. No one was in there? Nobody. Not as Yeah, it. no one. Guess that clue no good, huh? No, exactly. that's actually a great clue. If Ryoma's body was hidden inside the staircase, Himiko would have had to pull them out before she went inside. There certainly wasn't enough room in the staircase for both of them. Exactly. But that means... If the tank was empty when Gonta looked, Ryoma's body must not have been hidden in the staircase. Yes. Logic what if they to the rescue. into that space with Ryoma's body to avoid getting caught. She had no need to worry about us witnessing her at that point. For the entire stage was hidden behind a curtain. To all but Gonta, anyway. Then the culprit never would have considered hiding inside the staircase with the body. Entering the staircase after moving the body is much faster. 
and seems more rational too. Yeah. Then Ryoma's body wasn't hidden in the stairs? No, it wasn't. Someone better say where the fucking body was hidden or I'm gonna start cutting throats. Uh, I think it was, I think it was in the tank. That's what I think. I might be wrong though. Uh, that might make sense, but I don't know why the piranhas wouldn't. I'm gonna Where try. were you Let's hiding see. Ryoma's body? It wasn't really in the stairs, was it? After all, there was only enough space for Himiko. Well, how about behind the curtain? If there was a way to enter the tank from there, no. then it would be plausible. Or maybe the body was in the tank all along. But we just couldn't see it. No. Impossible. You need top-notch visual effects to pull that off. And what of the tank containing the piranhas? Yeah. No way! If you put a body in there, the piranhas would have eaten it way before we saw it. But if the body and piranhas were separated... <laughs> um... Damn it! I think so, somehow. No, oh, what? Damn it! No, 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 mm. uh. We can't let it end here! The body and... ...separated. Oh! I agree! The square blast plane! Oh my god. Ah. I should have thought of that. <laughs> Kyo's hypothesis is correct. The body and the piranhas were separated. This was accomplished using the square glass pane found in the tank. <laughs> using that glass pane as a divider, a safe space could be created in the tank. It is in such a space that the body could be stored, separated from the piranhas. That makes sense. Ryoma's body was hidden in the piranha tank the whole time! So Ryoma's body fell into the water tank with the piranhas? Gonta knew it! What is it, Gonta? Gonta was above stage when piranhas fall. That's why Gonta sees something no one else could. When piranhas fell, Gonta sees some big thing fall into water tank with them. to think about it? Don't have maybe see Ryoma's body. When the piranhas dropped from the tank, I thought I saw something bigger drop as well. The water tank on the bottom is made completely out of glass, correct? I would guess so. You can see what is happening through the glass. Even in murky water, a dead body would still be visible in a glass tank. I'm mean, yes. so. A certain something was used to obscure the body. Didn't we just a say the... Some... We all agreed that the glass pane was used to separate the body from the piranhas, correct? Yeah. Clearly. It's like a mirror. That method has the added benefit of hiding the body from view. Yeah. That makes sense. Corporate was able to conceal the body in the piranha tank. This is it! Yeah, it's the cram piranhas. It was the piranhas. The piranhas were obscuring the body. Huh? The piranhas? Yeah. That's right. Remember and you said they were all crammed. During the investigate? She was like, oh, I noticed it right here. More piranhas. But there weren't really more piranhas, they were just blocked from view. They increased that significantly? I didn't know piranhas fuck like rabbits. <laughs> it seemed that way, but it wasn't that the actual number of piranhas increased. The glass pane divided the tank nearly in half, right? The piranhas got crowded together, making it look like there were more of them. There you go. The more densely the piranhas are packed, the harder it is to see past them. Because of that, it was difficult to see the body hidden in the tank. Then who would kill him, though? The glass pane was the lid from the piranha tank. 
was really easy to detach that lid. So it's no wonder they used it as a divider. Gee, thanks for telling us that useless detail. No, I mean, it makes what sense. What the heck are you saying? That detail was super useful! Sure, the lid looks a little big, but if you set it diagonally, it would fit perfectly. Nice job, Himiko! Your explanation <laughs> was awesome! This much evidence, it seems like the body was definitely in the piranha tank. Congrats, Himiko! Now there should be no reason for anyone to suspect you. Well... Mm, really? Yay! Yeah, because if you didn't switch places with the body, then you couldn't have killed him. It only means we now have other suspects. You are not cleared of suspicion just yet. <laughs> okay, but still, that's way better! Like ten times what better. What wonderful news, Himiko! Atua is happy for you. Oh, shut up. Apologize, Angie. You and your Atua better tell Himiko you're sorry right now. Exactly. Atua is sleeping. He, he went, went to, to bed. bed. Angry because we all <laughs> doubted him. <laughs> what a petty ass god. <laughs> no, it's okay. We shouldn't be mad at Angie. We should be mad at this class trial. At this killing game. Yeah. Oh, Himiko! Bless your sweet, kind heart. For real, though. That's what it's it's anyway. What? No, no, don't tell me you still believe in it, too. No. It's too bad that the handsome god went to bed angry, though. What? Himiko's still brainwashed? Yes. But I'm not giving up just yet. This is gonna be a breeze. Great. Now, what are we gonna do? We're back to square one. And why are we back to square one? Because any of us could still be the culprit. Jeez! You flunk out of tard school or something? Nuh-uh. Not everyone. <laughs> we can narrow it down to whoever doesn't have an alibi yet. Exactly. Eh? What alibi? I alibi. guess I should have known a dumb whore pig like you wouldn't understand. So let me explain. Oh, my God. Who you calling a dumb pig? Don't make fun of you. If there's this much evidence, then there's no mistake the body was hidden in the piranha tank. But for someone to plant the body in there with such limited time is pretty tricky. Honestly, Kokichi brings up a valid point. There's one time the culprit could have set up the scene. Um, yes, I'm during my time. Wait, what? Damn it! What? No, 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 no. Wait. Either it, it wasn't this morning, so it has to be before nighttime. That's it. Yeah. It was done yesterday before nighttime. Ding, ding, ding! The ultimate detective gets it right again. Oh, wait. How do you know it was before nighttime yesterday? Stop asking me dumbass questions. It could have been solved with the process of elimination. Jeez. Fine. <laughs> I'll explain it to the itty bitty pea brained bitchlet. The bitchlet? <laughs> First, the gym was closed during nighttime, so no one could have entered. Yeah, no one. If you try to enter the gym at night, it'll go off. You yep, talking yep. about my butthole? What? No, she means the alarm. <laughs> After nighttime passed, morning came. But hiding the body before the show was. quite risky. <laughs> Himiko and I were waiting in front of the gym before the morning announcement. Which leaves only one possibility. It was done before nighttime yesterday. Anyone yes. who doesn't get this is just as stupid as the whore bitchlet over there. Stop making fun of you! So the culprit placed Ryoma's corpse in the piranha tank before nighttime yesterday? Which means he was also killed during that time frame. Yeah. Yay! Now we know what time the crime happened, right? I still don't really get it, though. Can we narrow down the time of death a bit more? I'm sure we can narrow it down. Alright, that's not too hard. Yeah, we got the witness. This is it! There you go. If we can find out who last saw Ryoma alive, we can narrow down the time of death. Yeah. Hirumi, you were asking everyone when they had last seen him, right? Yes. Gonta was the last person who saw Ryoma. What? Really? And when was the last time Gonta saw Ryoma? Like eight. Um, 
Don't you think that was maybe 8 p.m.? If he was last seen at 8 p.m. and was killed before nighttime officially began... Then we can assume the crime took place between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock at night. So during so the we must do meet and greet. is find someone with no alibi for that time period. Simple enough. After all, most of us were detained by Gonta then. If I recall yeah. correctly, the only people that weren't there besides Ryoma... That would be the four of us. Myself, Kaito, Mew, and also Maki. Maki wouldn't do it. Well, Kirumi, you would tell the truth, even if it screwed you over. Yeah, but Kirumi wouldn't do that everyone. either. It is my duty to unveil the truth, so I do not care if people suspect me. Yeah, Kirumi's too good. Oh, beautiful! Your spirit of self-sacrifice is just too beautiful! Aww. I will also say this. The crime took place between 8 and 10 o'clock at night. Huh? Wait, we just confirmed that, but didn't we? I was only there for about five minutes. Why would you even say that, though? You're tying a noose around your neck, you know. I don't care if it was five seconds. It's way too suspicious that you were alone in the gym. I think the cleaning lady here is the culprit. You killed Rioma, didn't you? It's too soon to tell. We should hear what everyone has to say, right? Exactly. Fuck that noise! But Mew, you don't have an alibi for when the crime occurred either, do you? Yeah, for real. You think I'm suspicious? Uh, I don't even know where the gym is! Alright, bro. Doesn't telling such obvious lies make you more suspicious? Mew? Like, honestly. The other two without alibis are Kaito and Maki. Let us hear your testimonies. I was in my research lab the whole time. I didn't go to the gym. That, that makes sense. That cannot be proven, can it? What about Kaito? Only murderers grow out creepy facial hair like mustaches and goatees. Yeah, what was Kaito what? doing? My goatee's not creepy. It gives me a glamorous celebrity vibe. Yeah. Anyway, among those four, the culprit must be the one who doesn't have an alibi. I apologize, but given the circumstances, we have no choice but to suspect you. Suspect who? Who's the culprit? Oh, jeez. Wait up! Why are you guys suspicious of me? I've been helping the whole time! Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Now, I do have an alibi. Don't be Tannic talking now. You will see whether or not I am suspicious as the trial progresses. No. I'm no not way the, culprit. the culprit! No! Oh, this is not good. I, have I an was alibi. running away from Gonta! What is your alibi? Tried hiding in the classroom. When I was running from Gonta, I even tried hiding in the girls' bathroom. Things got a little heated if catch my pervert, filthy male pervert. Oh my God. What's Maki's alibi? Then right before nighttime, I got tired and fell asleep. Did you really leave the gym at 9 p.m.? Oh jeez. Are you sure you did not stay at the gym? What? No, in my own room. Stay at the gym. What? Ah, there we go. I heard it. Oh, this whole panic debate thing is scary. <laughs> no, I think Kirumi is telling the truth. Kokichi's story proves it. Yeah, Kokichi was being chased by Kirumi. So after that, I ran. She just kept talking, and then finally let me go at 10 p.m. Yeah, spent a whole hour running away from the maid. Kokichi met Kirumi at 9 p.m., and they were together until nighttime. Gonta went to the gym to catch Himiko and Angie, five minutes before 9 o'clock. After I left Gonta's lab, I ran into Kirumi. I'm pretty sure Kirumi stayed at the gym five minutes till 9 o'clock. This information could have been told to us beforehand. Yeah. Sorry, forgot. I definitely didn't keep it a secret to make the trial more interesting. <laughs> forgot? It seems far more plausible that you are telling another lie. Unlike robots, we meatbags can't pull out our memories from our hard drive. Was that supposed to offend me? Your irrationality fills me with pity. <laughs> 
He looks kind of like Makoto. If I am the culprit, that would mean I killed Makoto in five like minutes. <laughs> Transported him to the gym and hid him in the piranha tank. If you called Ryoma out to the gym and killed him there, you wouldn't need to move him. All you would have to do is hide him in the piranha tank. Gonto yeah. was in the midst of heading to the gym to capture Angie. Are you claiming I took advantage of that and called? Oh, no. That'd be pretty difficult. We should probably look at other possibilities. Maybe someone snuck into the gym while Kirumi and I were busy talking. The only ones capable of that are the other three with no alibis. So Kaito, Mew, Mew Kaito, and Maki. Yeah. Ah, you're including me too. I don't think Maki or Mew did it, but I don't think but Kaito would either. There's actually one person we can it? rule out of the suspects list. Right? There's one person who's totally not suspicious. Say who it is already. One person can be eliminated. Wasn't it? Someone saw. I thought she. I thought he saw Maki. Didn't he? No. No. Wait. Wait. I'm. I'm having a bad memory. He either saw Mew or Maki. I remember he saw a girl. That's it. Yeah. That's me. Kokichi, you're talking about Mew, right? What? Mew? I like how Kaito was like, wait, it was me! Yeah, you can take her off the list. She actually has an alibi. Booyah! Suck it, nerds! <laughs> wait a sec, since when does she have an alibi? If you compare everyone's statements, there's no other possibility. Oh yeah, I did see something odd. Something odd. Saw a half-naked girl wandering around. Yeah, too dark for me to see. Who else would that be other than frickin' you? A girl you? walking around half-naked. Who else could it be? But the horny exhibitionist Mew. <laughs> we can't just jump to conclusions like that. He just saw a shadow, right? That could have been anyone walking around in women's underwear. Even me! What? That'd be a whole different issue. No, it's Mew, without a doubt. Mew and Gonta's statements prove it. Oh yeah, Gonta saw. Got to see Mew, but Mew get red hot, so Gonta no bring her. Oh, the secret woman weapon was her not having a lot of clothes on. I don't know. Maybe she went to the pool. <laughs> oh um, well, I have to use my secret woman weapon, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I see, I see. It sounds like... What? Why the heck were you in your underwear, Mew? Oh, well, because, you know, I'm pretty stacked, so... <laughs> I figured I'd take my clothes off, so Gonta would be too flustered to touch me. I mean... <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, you cockroaches! I can't believe... I mean, no, I can believe this. <laughs> I think the blood rushed to both of Gonta's heads because he got super embarrassed. Mew was in her underwear. Oh my god. Gonta got weird feeling, so Gonta ran away. Well, of when you got the would. body of a goddess, it's only natural to want to flaunt it. I show my panties to the boys all the time. And I mean all the time. <laughs> all the time, huh? All the time. So you're welcome, Gonta. Think of me during your next tug session. <laughs> Most of that was unintelligible nonsense, but it would seem that Mew has an actual alibi. Her alibi is that she, she just took off her clothes. Okay, yep, fine. It took a fine, while, Mew has an alibi. but at least we got everyone's alibis cleared up. There you go. Good job. We should remember all of this in case we need to recall these events again. Alibis for yesterday. <laughs> that leaves Kaito and Maki as the only ones with no alibis. And Maki was adamant on not leaving the room, so then Kaito? Then one of them must be the culprit. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Gets the culprit by it. Hold oh. up! Don't decide just yet! Prime suspects. But something inside me doesn't want to accuse Kaito. Yeah, me. I want to believe Kaito until he's proven guilty. Uh, maybe we should determine the sequence of events. The culprit w No, we should do something more fun. And I have the perfect idea. What? We narrowed it down to two people. And one of those two is the culprit. 
Since we don't have to randomly accuse each other, finding the truth just got much easier. So let's find the truth with a more effective method. Uh? What is this effective method? If one of them is the culprit, then the innocent one should know who the guilty one is. Yeah? Because if you know you're not the culprit, then you can just accuse the other person. Yes, that is true. Which means there is one person among us who definitely knows who the culprit is. To that someone who knows, do your best to convince us. Work harder. <laughs> Work harder? Work harder? Wait, what? Have the two argue for their innocence. That's how we'll decide our culprit. I don't know if I want to trust that process. Even if we did that, wouldn't they just pass the blame back and forth? And... Huh? You guys talk about cooperation and teamwork, but you're all afraid. You're too scared to point your fingers at others, so you hide behind the word trust. Huh. How do you expect to find the culprit when you're all worried about each other's feelings? Aww. If you're planning to expose a liar, then you have to corner them psychologically. I guess so. Only then will they reveal their true self as a liar, uh. hiding beneath a layer of deceit. Oh my God, Kokichi. You're if brilliant, I'm joking. Liar, I suggest that the two suspects argue against each other. No more pointless deductions. All we need is for them to fight for their lives. Duh. So let's host an argument that's totally not boring but super fun! Uh? We'll catch the culprit in their lies when we find a contradiction. We'll uh. scare the culprit until they screw up! That's how a true class trial works. Right, Monokuma? <laughs> a development like that would liven things up a bit. <laughs> yep, I totes agree. You're okay. agreeing with Monokuma? Just whose side are you on? I'm on your side. I don't want to die either, you know. That's why we need to take this seriously. A hot debate to smoke out the liar. And how do you expect us to start this? For real. If you guys need some help getting started, I can give out the first topic. Go ahead. Oh. Uh... Our first topic is this. No. The Cubs pad. Oh, the Not motives. just any Cubs pad, but the one given to our latest victim, Ryoma. When we started investigating, I went straight to his room to borrow it. So it wasn't the culprit who took the video from his room. It was you. And the reason why I brought it out just for this occasion is because one of these two had Ryoma's Moda video. What? One of these two had... Was it Maki's? And for us to figure that out, we need to know who this Moda video belongs to. Take a guess, everyone. Whose Moda video did Ryoma have? Was it Maki? Uh... That's it! I mean, that's the only one. <laughs> it was... Maki's motive video, right? Wow, how did you ever get? Ooh, I know, I know! It's because the motive video that you have belongs to Kaito. Process of elimination wins again. The obvious answer was Maki, right? Is that true, Shuichi? Yes, you're right. Yeah. And what about that? Just because Ryoma had my motive video, that doesn't make me the culprit. <laughs> Finally, you said something! This is how a debate should be. I guess. I only brought up the motive video to make you talk. Why is talk much? Me? Okay, now that we got the party rolling, let's get you and Kaito ready to argue. Okay. Remember, if you're not the culprit, then that means the other one is. Let's start this extreme death debate. What? Tear up the other's lies. Rip each other apart. Please don't. Wait just a minute. What are you trying to... Quit screwing around. We don't need to debate who's a culprit. I'm not the culprit. That's for sure. Which means... Kaito, wait. Maybe Kokichi is wrong. Maybe he... But Maki isn't a culprit either. What? Huh? What? Huh? Really? You're saying neither of you are the culprit? Then what would be the point of this whole debate? Who cares about that? All I know is that neither me or Maki are the culprit. What? It's just a hunch I've got. Hunch? 
Uh, a uh, hunch? Are you being serious? You do know all our lives are on the line here. And you're betting our lives on just a hunch? Yes. Hm. You don't get it. This isn't just any hunch. This is an official hunch from the Kaito Mamuta, Luminary of the Stars. Okay. What? How illogical. This is even more difficult to comprehend than Kokichi's antics. Yeah, honestly. You're totally not serious. You can't be that stupid, right? <laughs> no, he might actually be that stupid. <laughs> Damn idiot! <laughs> I'll do a damned idiot! Hey, don't call me an idiot! Anyway, me and Maki aren't the culprit. Yes! There's no doubt about it. I believe in Maki. I do too. You what? You believe in her? But based on what? Huh? I'm not gonna base it on anything. <laughs> No matter where the clues point, in the end, the only thing that matters is what I believe, right? Whether I believe or not, whether I want to believe or not, that's the only thing that matters. So, you do not have any evidence? Only baseless conjecture. Yes. But, I totally get where he's coming from, because I want to believe in Himiko too! You want to believe, huh? Wanting to believe in someone is a beautiful act, yes. I do too. However, it is a sentiment that has no place in a class trial. He's an idiot after all. Guys. It's okay to be idiot, as long as you believe in people. I'm going to set it perfectly. Guys, I said don't call me an idiot! It really hurts my feelings. Wait a second. You're not supposed to think you're supposed to think logically and not let your feelings get into it. Uh -huh. I believe in you because I want to. Oh. No. Isn't that why you believe in Kaido? Well, wait, no, that doesn't mean he's it. I have no idea who it is. If I could trust my logic, maybe I should trust Kaito's feelings too. It'll work out. I'll believe in Maki as well. What? That's our Kaido, right? Making us think with our hearts. You too? How could the ultimate detective believe in someone without proof? But there's no proof linking Maki or Kaido to this crime either. Yes. I believe in innocent until proven guilty. For now, they are innocent. Right on, Shuichi. I knew I picked a good sidekick. Uh, and by the way, I might be the ultimate detective, but I'm in training. Yeah. I told you that, didn't I? I'm just an apprentice, not a real detective. How do you plan to get closer to the truth without suspecting either of them? Unless you have evidence to the contrary, these two will remain suspect. So I just have to turn it around, right? Huh? It's not like I owe that idiot a favor or anything just because he defended me. But that hopeless idiot may have encouraged me a bit. Oh. Seriously! Enough's enough! Stop calling me an idiot! What are you trying to say, Maki? I didn't want to say anything, but I can't stay silent forever. Hmm? So I'll tell you. Oh? Tell us what? I met up with Ryoma during nighttime yesterday. What? What? Ryoma? At nighttime? So Ryoma was still alive at nighttime? I thought the crime took place between oh. 8 and 10 o'clock at night. Oh, jeez. That's wrong, because I met up with Ryoma during nighttime. If that's true, then we have no basis for suspecting only Kaito and Maki. That's right. Everyone suspected them, because they know have alibis for those times. Yeah. That means me and Maki aren't suspects anymore. Yeah. Like, around. You think I'm dumb enough to swallow that line of crap? 